right, everybody. Welcome to episode 213 of Psycho's Platters. Always sponsored by coffee each and every time. Each and every time. So uh, I was going to be a real smart aleck and try to find the shirt of the person I'm going to be reviewing next. And some people are like going, oh, man, not another review episode. Yes, I'm going to do Psycho's, Mighty Psycho's going to go do review episodes when I can afford it. Because I'm not going to lie, I still have lots of vinyl that you guys haven't seen. And we're going to get to that. We will, I promise you on that. But when I come across some really kind of cool albums, and what I mean by that is, is that I can't afford albums so much anymore, not new ones, you know? So um, the I usually get CDs because it's a lot cheaper for me. And, of course, Mighty Psycho gets to go off and hear what new music or relatively newer music. So how did I go up and give you my bad Dylan impression? Oh, uh, it's, it's a horrible Dylan impression. I know, but I like doing it, though. What can I say? But <laughs> it's off of the new two-CD edition of Bob Dylan's The Bootleg Series, Volume 13, Trouble No More, 1979 to 1981, live. Now, um, like I said, I like, I like how he looks here. He's like... Now, I know some of you people out there, maybe you're Dylan fans. I hope you are. Or even if you're not, just bear with me a minute, okay? Um, I've liked Dylan since I was a little kid. Well, it turns out maybe I know why I like Dylan as a musician. My, my real father was a huge Dylan fan, and I never met him. So, what coinky dink is that, right? I don't know. But... When I started listening to him, uh, I ended up getting in 1973-74, uh, I got Knockin' on Heaven's Door, the 45. I don't know. That was when I first got mesmerized by some of his work. I'm like, my God, this man just could do that. Could be compelling, could be convincing, could be passionate about some of his work. You know what, guys? I'll tell you something. A lot of people that like Dylan seem to be turned off by what I call the Christian Trilogy, the Christian Albums Trilogy. In late 1978, and I'll get to the research in a minute, guys, on this. But in late 1978, uh, just as he's getting ready to finish his tour for Street Legal, which I like that album too. He guess was on a quest for something. And according to this story, some fan threw a silver cross on the stage. Dylan took that as a sign. And so, believe it or not, he starts he starts searching. I mean, after all, if you think about it, in the early 60s he was searching for stuff too, right? Searching and protesting thinking, asking, questioning. That's what keeps your mind sharp, what keeps your soul alive and burning and the passion and the fire in the belly, so to speak. Well, you know, the Christian Trilogy album, Slow Train Coming, Saved, Shot of Love, all 79 through 81. Some people will not listen to those albums that are Dylan fans. I think, honestly, there is some overlooked gems in those albums. If you haven't listened to them, give them a listen. I think you'll get a kick out of it. But what I'm getting on this here, which this, of course, just came out November 3rd. Uh, Trouble Moon No More, 1979-81, the 2-CD edition. I will let you know there's a 4-LP edition of this, and uh, there is also a deluxe 9-disc box set. Uh, of course, it's live along with Rare and Unreleased on that box set. And what I mean by the Rare and Unreleased, it's the Rare and Unreleased of the alternate takes and outtakes from those three Christian Columbia albums that he did. Uh, and a whole live 1981 Earl's Court show. Also, if you go to Bob Dylan's website, I'm told you can get a two-CD limited edition I don't know if it's on top of the deluxe box set or you can get it separate. I'm not sure. The two-CD limited edition exclusive through that website 
of a complete live in San Diego 1979 show. Um, a single came off of this, When You Gonna Wake Up, from Oslo, Norway, live July of 81. Uh, it was released on September 20th. Uh, only made it to number 49 in the U.S., but number 21 in the U.K. He almost ended up with a 21, a top 20 chart in, uh, in the U.K., which I think is awesome. Here's what you're looking at uh, for this here. Pretty much it's your, uh, it's your standard. you got some very nice live shots here. It's a double CD on this. Um, the photo booklet's kind of cool. I like, uh, I've always liked his harmonica work. But uh, here's a nice picture, an inlay. Also a uh, commercial for Shot of Love, a uh, print commercial for that. Um, so, like I said, 1979 to 81, you have various different shows that are that are recorded from this. Here's the back two on this. Um, special guests, though, on the second disc of this, you've got uh, you've got a total of 30 tunes on all, all this. I'm, you've got several different versions, of course, of Slow Train. It, it changes all the time. Some of these ones do. Uh, also, um, there's some unreleased, they never got recorded, or at least put out, uh, Ain't Gonna Go to Hell for Anybody is one of them, um, but really nice on that bit. Precious Angel, I like that one too, but so special guests on this one here, Al Cooper shows up on, uh, on In the Summertime, which was recorded October 22nd of 81 in Boston. Hey, uh, hey Rob, <laughs> Are you, uh, did you go to that gig, Rob? I, I, Rob's going to know what I'm talking about if he's watching. I know I know. Rob Balboni sometimes has time to watch these. Sometimes he doesn't. Uh, and also, Every Grain of Sand from November of 81 in Lakeland, Florida gig. Also, an appearance on this by Carlos Santana. Yeah, Santana shows up on one tune. Uh, the Groom's Still Waiting at the Altar from the November 13, 1980 San Francisco gig. Um... His live band during those touring years, of course, uh, other than Bob himself, Spooner Oldham, uh, Muscle Shoals, member on keys along with Willie Smith and Terry Young, Steve Ripley, and Fred Tackett on guitars. Uh, Fred Tackett started, he got his musical start pretty much by associating with Little Feet. Going back to 1972, he actually shows up on uh, 1973's uh, Dixie Chicken. If I remember correctly, he does some co-writes on it too. Um, but when... Uh, when Little Feet reunited uh, nine years later after the death of Lowell George in 79, so in 88 when they reunited, uh, he became a member, and he still is a member of Little Feet. Tim Drummond was on bass on those tours. Uh, he worked with Clapton, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, J.J. Kale, and others. Jim Keltner on drums, session drummer extraordinaire. He ended up working separately uh, with three of the four Beatles, all but Paul, Steve Miller, Clapton, and others. Carolyn Dennis sings background vocals on this. Uh, she'll end up being the future Mrs. Bob Dylan in the 80s, uh, but previously before that she sang uh, background for the Carpenters, Springsteen, and others. And Clyde King, former member of Ray Charles' band Ray Letts, uh, background singers for that. He al she also worked with Humble Pie, Stones, B.B. King, and others. So that's what you've got on this double disc. Now I know you're asking, hey Mighty Psycho, shut the hell up and tell us what do you think about this album, this double album? Guys, I'm going to tell you something. Get this. If you are a Dylan fan, you are going to want to get this. Now, like I said, I know they've been doing the bootleg series. Some volumes are better than others. He is so impassioned on this. He is like, it, honest to God, it feels like he woke up. He woke up in this period. And... I, it just shows him and his band cook a lot of times on this thing. I am very happy to buy this. Now, I'll tell you, um, Barnes & Noble carries it, and I think Best Buy does too. Barnes & Noble, if you're a member, I managed to get this thing for $18. It books anywhere from 21 to 24 I think, I saw for CD. And like I said, you got your 4LP set. And the big Mega 9 disc, I'm not going to lie, I, if it was reasonably priced, I would even go for that 9 disc. That's how confident I am of just this 2 disc alone. Like I said, if you're a Dylan fan, you're not going to go wrong. If you like Christian music, Christian rock music, you're not going to go wrong on this either. And if you like good live shows, get this too. Um, honestly, you, you can't go wrong with this. 
here's my question though for you in the comments. Please put in the comments below. Um, did you guys listen to that trilogy of Christian albums that he did? Um, are they in your collection if you're a Dylan fan? Um, did you get to go to any of the gigs between 79 and 81 on this? I'd like to hear some inciting bit on that too. Um, I don't know. It's like, here's the other thing I'm going to have on Dylan for an opinion, and then I'll shut up on this. I don't understand the last couple albums. I mean, the last one I remember that I half liked was Tempest in 2012. And uh, I liked the Christmas album in 09. What happened? <laughs> in, he did Fallen Angels, which was a tribute album. Did Strangers in the Night, tribute album. Did Triplicate. Three album, triplicate. All cover tunes. Crooner stuff, 30s to 50s. What's going on? Does anybody have an insight on this? Because... I, I, are they just trying to burn through the Columbia contract? Why is he... He can't have lost the fire. Seriously. I mean, this world changes all the time. I just do not understand. I know Dylan records don't sell very well anymore. I get that, okay? But I, I just don't get it. Am I missing something here, guys? Let me know in the comments. And, uh... Like I said, also, what's your favorite Dylan tune or album, if you have one? I'd love to hear from you on this bit. I know I fibbed. I went off and I said I was going to do a vinyl episode, but guess what? Uh, um, things changed a little bit, because I'm hoping tomorrow I'm going to do another CD review. This time, the brand new Rolling Stones double CD archival on air, which just got released today, December 1st. So... Like I said, that'll probably be my next episode. And then I'm hoping to do a vinyl one. I swear, a lot. So, <laughs> take care. Rock on. God bless. And uh, like and sub Psycho's Platters if you haven't yet, please. It'd be well appreciated. We'd like to get to that 500 mark by the time I do that 5th anniversary episode. All right, everybody. Take care. God bless.